uh, in this video we will be seeing some properties of homomorphisms so this chapter will be about group homomorphisms and since we saw some group homomorphisms and some kernel of homomorphisms homomorphisms now we are going to check some properties so let phi be a homomorphism from g to g prime i'm going to consider h a subgroup of g so g will be an element in the group g and h will be an element in the subgroup h so first property phi carries the identity g to the identity g prime meaning this is g this is g prime so the identity will always be carried by a homomorphism a homomorphism will always carry the identity into the identity prime this is very easy to prove too okay phi of g to the power of n equals phi of g to the power of n meaning phi of g1 times g2 times g3 will be the same as phi of g1 times phi of g2 times phi of g3 second property third property phi of the so the the image of the subgroup so is phi of h h in the subgroup is a subgroup of g prime okay so this means that if we have a group here and here we have a subgroup of g okay the image of a subgroup okay the image will here will also be a subgroup of g prime so phi my favorite notation is this one phi of h is a subgroup of g prime that's the the way i prefer to write it okay checked so if h is cyclic phi of h is cyclic so if this one is cyclic this one is will be cyclic now if this one is a billion if the subgroup is a billion the image of the subgroup will also be a billion okay check check if h is normal in g meaning the left cosets are equal to the right cosets okay a normal subgroup in g then phi of h is normal in the image of g okay if h is a sub is a normal subgroup of g uh, phi of h will be a normal subgroup of phi of g i'm sorry it will be a normal subgroup in the phi of g okay check if the order of an element g in the group g is n then the order of the image phi of g will divide n okay another property so the image of g will be g prime then the inverse image of g prime will be x in the group g such that phi of x is g prime meaning um, and of course that will be the kernel of phi times g okay if the order of h is n then the order of the image of the subgroup will divide the order of the subgroup if the, the order of the kernel of a homomorphism is n, then phi is n to 1, is n to 1 mapping from g to onto, onto subjective, subjection onto phi of g. So, um, if the kernel here, the order of the kernel is n then phi will be a n n to one mapping from 
G, this is, is G, onto a subjective, uh, uh, subjective mapping. If K is a subgroup of uh, G bar, if K is a subgroup of G bar, then the inverse image of K bar, so these are the objects in the image, okay, so this will be the inverse image, is going to be the set of K in G such that the image phi of K will be in um, K bar. Okay, and if if K is a subgroup of G bar, then the inverse image is a subgroup of G. If K is a subgroup of G bar, then the inverse image will be a subgroup of G. Another property of the homomorphism: if K homomorphisms, if K bar is a normal subgroup of G bar, so it's a, a bit like this one, okay, not only a subgroup but a normal subgroup of G bar, then the inverse image of K bar is a normal subgroup of G. So if K is a subgroup of G bar, then the inverse image of K bar will be a subgroup of G. If K bar is a normal subgroup of G bar, then the inverse image of K bar is a normal subgroup of G. Okay, 13. If phi is a surjective and the kernel of phi is only the identity, then phi is an isomorphism from G to uh, G bar. Okay. So a homomorphism from G to G bar. If phi is a, homomor a surjective homomorphism and if the kernel, the kernel, if the kernel of phi is only the identity, then we can say that G is isomorphic to G bar. Okay, a quick corollary of this, um, the, the properties of the homomorphisms. Kernels are normal. So if G is a homomorphism from G to G bar, or G prime, then the kernel of phi will be a normal subgroup of G. So we get now into the very first, the, the very important theorem, the first isomorphism theorem. Say we have phi that takes us from G to G prime and phi is a homomorphism with kernel K. And let gamma of K be a canonical homomorphism that takes from G to the factor group of G by K. Okay, the um, okay kernel gray. So there is a unique isomorphism. We are going to call it mu. That will take from the factor group G by the kernel to the phi of the image of G, such that phi of x, well, x in the group G, phi of x will be equal to mu gamma k of x for each x in G. Uh, let me see if I can draw. So, we have a group G And we have phi, a homomorphism, okay, 
and that is taking us to the image of G. OK. But G has a kernel K. OK. So we have G here with a kernel K here. OK. So that is going to take us through the canonical homomorphism gamma of k that will take us to the factor group of g by the kernel. OK. So we are going to call this gamma of k. So gamma of k will take us from g to the factor group of g by the kernel. It will take us from g to the factor group of g by the kernel through the canonical homomorphism. Okay. So the theorem says there is a unique isomorphism from, and we are going to call this uh, mu. There is a unique homomorph. Uh, I'm going to write it isomorphism. There is a unique isomorphism here that will take us from the factor group of G by the kernel to the image of G. Okay? And this is the very important first isomorphism theorem. So there, there, are very, there are several theorems concerning isomorphic factor groups. Okay? And they are known as isomorphism theorems in group theory. Okay? So the very first one is this one. So the conclusion here is that the factor group of G by the kernel is isomorphic to phi of G. OK, to uh, illustrate this first isomorphism theorem, we are going to take a homomorphism phi from D4, the dihedral group 4, into itself. OK, and we are going to define the homomorphism uh, this way. So rotation 0, rotation 180 degrees into phi maps it into rotation 0. Rotation 90 degrees, rotation 270 into rotation 90. Uh, horizontal line, vertical line into horizontal line, and first diagonal and second diagonal into the diagonal. So it's obvious that the kernel of phi is going to be uh, this one, right? Because these are the two objects, objects that are mapping into the image. OK? OK, now the question is, uh, we have to look for uh, this mapping here, right? This mu here. What is this mapping here? OK, that mapping is going to be um, we are going to do, so, rotation 0, kernel of phi, we are going to map it into rotation 0. OK, so left coset of kernel of phi, rotation 0, mapped into rotation 0. Left coset of kernel of phi, rotation 90 degrees by rotation 90 degrees into rotation 90 degrees, horizontal line types 
so this is the, the symmetry right of by the horizontal line in d4 right by the horizontal line um, left times left coset into horizontal line and diagonal times the kernel gets into the diagonal so since we multiply cosets by multiplying the representatives it's obvious that the group the factor group of g by the kernel f phi is obviously isomorphic to the image of phi of g if you want you can use the same uh, drawing as we did so g goes to phi of g right so this is the mapping this one will be gamma so here we'll have the factor group of g by the kernel of phi and here we have uh, what what shall we call this let's call it a ps uh, psi for instance so this one will be psi okay so this one will be an isomorphism okay because there is an isomorphism from the factor group of g by the kernel of phi to the images of g another example is the, the factor group of uh, integers by the the, the subgroup generated by n and that is isomorphic to z of n so you consider a mapping that takes you from the integers to the integers module n defined before so what is the kernel what is the kernel of phi obviously that the kernel is n because these elements here in the integers the elements generated by n here are going to map here into the identity right so by the previous theorem we can say that the the group of the integers by the subgroup n is isomorphic to Zn.